We want to bust some myths about travel right now. Myth number one, travel is expensive. It is expensive if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, but fortunately there's a ton of resources out there that we've personally employed on our own travels. One of which is called Scott's Cheap Flights. It's awesome. You have to be flexible and you have to be able to jump on tickets as soon as you hear that they're cheap. But if spontaneity is your thing and you can build it into your work schedule, then you can drunkenly buy $170 round trip tickets to Singapore like your coworker recently did. Crazy. A second one that we've used a lot, HelpX. HelpX. You exchange helping at a hotel or a farm or whatever in exchange for accommodation and food. So we've done it in Iceland, Ireland, New Zealand, and then once in Romania, but we won't talk about that one. That one was not so good. Yeah, so we're three for four on the HelpX. There's a lot of other programs like that. Woofing is another famous one. Another tip I like to give out is um, sleeping in airports. It's a website you can see if you're if you're only in an airport for eight hours, you don't want to spend $100 on, on a hotel. Just sleep in the airport. You can figure out where the Wi-Fi is, where you can get away with sleeping, where they have the chairs without armrests. It's, it's worked out for us. Another useful utility that we've used are crowdsourced platforms like Blah Blah Car, where you can find other riders who are gonna to go to similar areas as you, and it's like an unofficial Uber, but it can end up being really cheap to you know, drive halfway across Europe. It's especially helpful when you're in a location where there's not a train from point A to point B of where you wanna go, but it's a, it's a well-trafficked route for other people. So you just jump in a car with a group of other people and get to where you wanna go much faster and much cheaper than you would otherwise. The second myth we want to bust is that travel is dangerous, and everywhere outside of the United States is dangerous. Travel is by nature adventurous and requires a little bit of a degree of kind of putting yourself out there and of having faith in humanity and in making wise decisions. But if you're able to check those boxes, then there's no reason why you shouldn't uh, get out there and check out something that's off the beaten path or even has a State Department travel warning in place. We've been to many off the beaten path destinations like Armenia to the Karabakh region. We've been to Eastern Romania and to South America, Cuba, parts of Africa. and. We've never run into significant trouble beyond, you know, the odd scam or occasional pickpocket with the gypsies in the train station. There are pickpocketers everywhere though. You can get pickpocketed in LA. The third myth that we want to bust today about travel is that travel is hard. I think the hardest part about traveling is not knowing where you're going, but nowadays you can use Uber in every country. We were just in India. We used Uber all over India and it was great. No one's trying to rip you off. You know exactly where you're going. There's a lot of transparency that comes with technological platforms. So Uber is a great example. Airbnb has been very useful for us. We've used it in Bulgaria. We've used it in Nepal for six weeks to rent an apartment. I mean, really all over the world. It's, it's efficient, it's transparent, and we've had great experiences with it. Because of competition in the travel industry, and certainly between the airlines, you're starting to see round trip international routes that are down 200, 300 bucks to get over to Europe. Yeah, to go from LA to Iceland to Scotland, you can get $400 round trip multi-stop tickets for that. With all the cheap flights that there are and all the opportunities that you have to use technology to make travel easier, there's no excuse for not traveling. Yeah, if it's something that you're called to do, another thing that you can benefit from is longer stays. So for instance, you're gonna fly over to Nepal, maybe the round trip airfare is gonna cost you 800 or 1,000 bucks, but if you're able to build it into your schedule where you can stay for six weeks, it's gonna be a lot cheaper to be there than to be at home in San Diego or San Francisco. So we've, we've had you know two or three long trips, a six month trip, an eight month trip, and then we just had almost a month in India. And I think we spent less money having those um, bucket list experiences, you know, riding camels in the desert, visiting villagers who are making rugs by hand, going scuba diving, doing all the kind of stuff that really is a, a call to adventure. And it's actually cheaper than just hanging out in San Diego and going out to PB or the gas lamp. It's ridiculous. Yeah. With that in mind, I mean, we're going to the Amazon in November and I'm, I'm baffled as to why more people aren't taking advantage of these situations. And people will call us and be like, yeah, I want to travel, I want cheap flights, but I only like to fly business class. <laughs> like, you gotta be flexible if you want to do it this way and you get a lot of bang for your buck in most of these other places in the world. So it's not that hard, it's not that expensive, and it's certainly not that dangerous. Still hard to beat San Diego though.